Hey, what's up guys? We've been here working on the Mela, trying to work out all the kinks, make it the best mushroom grower that we can. Uh, but we were thinking, what other applications could we use this for? So I went around, asked everyone I knew to see what other ideas they had. Surely they gotta have some good ideas, right? Surely. Mothball bin, hand tanning box. That could be a good one. Man, I wonder if we can talk to Elon Musk, send it to Mars, and they can grow potatoes in Dude, I don't know. I, I'm kind of feeling like it worked way better as like a, a cat litter box kind of situation. I can see that. Automatic M&M dispenser. Some new cool things coming for the Mela. Um, so we're looking at adding a uh, back scratcher attachment, also a, a power saw. Ghost trap. So, you know, if you have a full moon or maybe a crescent moon um, and you're in your room and you hear noises. Beanie baby case. Cabbage patch doll. Case? I think you could use it as like a kitty litter warmer. Uh, you hate when your kitty litter gets cold. Um, I think this could help keep it uh, warm and maybe moist. Have you ever wanted to talk to somebody from the 1800s? Maybe a ghost, a relative of the past, but when you summon them using a Ouija board? Lego dryer or a, uh, a baby warmer? A hamster mansion. And the ghosts are they're not hanging out for long. So usually, they go. Oof, that got weird. I guess ideation's a little harder than I thought. A lot of cat stuff. What? Anyways guys, all joking aside, we did come up with some good alternative uses for Mela. So let's go check those out. Hey, I'm Jack Manzella. I'm a digital marketing specialist here at First Build. Uh, and I also like to make charcuterie boards. I found that there's a community of meat curing enthusiasts and in order to properly cure meat, you need to have a specific humidity and temperature and airflow. So one idea would, that would be that we could uh, maybe flip Mela vertically, and then you'd be able to hang different types of meats from Mela and control the humidity and the airflow so that you're able to cure meat in the comfort of your home. It's a bioactive reptile enclosure. My daughter is big into reptiles and she's got um, she hasn't done bioactive yet, which is uh, kind of a, a new trend of having insects and plant life in your reptile enclosure so that you don't have to clean the cage as much because the natural system kind of takes over. But the typical way to do it, you have heaters with their own thermostats, different humidifiers, all these different devices. The idea with Mela is you can combine all that, have everything controlled, have an app to get all your data about your uh, reptile habitat, uh, make things a lot easier. All right, these are microgreens. They're young nutrient greens grown from little seeds. They're put in an environment, they have a high humidity and then they start sprouting and growing. Mela is a perfect environment for this because we can control the humidity and we can get enough moisture for them to grow in the best, the best scenario. We have growing lights. So um, this is kind of our experiment, but soon we'll be testing it and running it in the Mela. So when we were doing research for different applications for Mela, I came across terrariums. And instead of doing more research, I decided just to build it. So this is pretty cool. It's a little micro ecosystem. It takes all the benefits of Big Mela and kind of shrinks it down into a tabletop, desktop size. Uh, so it can be cool for the office, cool for the home. Um, it uses moisture from the same wicking filter and pulls that in and actually keeps these small plants alive. They just absorb moisture through the air. So it was a pretty cool build and I'm happy how it turned out. So we've heard from you guys that airflow, humidity, and temperature control are all pretty important to growing pot. We don't know anything about that, but maybe you guys do. If you know anything and think this might be useful to grow pot in, leave us a comment in the section below.